What's going on, guys? This isn't your ordinary guy. No, no, no. This is your motivation guy. That's right. Your friend, the one and only Keith Allen, man. I hope you guys are having a good time, you know, just grinding every single day, man. Trying to get better, not only in this game, but also in life. Okay, guys, welcome back to the series where we analyze different pro player scenarios and really get you involved by asking, like, what would you do? Okay, so we heard some great, great feedback from this. So I'm super excited to bring you guys another video. Okay, so today we're going to be, you know, looking at Benji Fishy, Aiden, and FNCS winner X2 Twins Jordan. These three are like absolute legends in their respective regions. You know, I think we can all appreciate just how incredible they've been playing, especially lately. So let's look at their recent tournament gameplay and then just see what we can learn. But if you want to learn even more from top pros like these, all right, ProGuys.com is here to help. We have exclusive lessons, videos, and private pro coaches waiting to help you guys improve. So whatever you need to do to thrive as a pro player, you can find over at ProGuys, all right? So check the link in the description to get started. All right, guys, it's about that time. I'm pumped up right now. I hope you guys are hyped because this video is about to be amazing. It's time to sit back, relax, and grab some of my favorite candy. Who's the loudest? Here we go. It's that bunch of crunch. And let's get this going. All right, so first up, we've got an early game scenario from Benji Fishy. Okay, so, you know, he's just chilling right now, you know, drinking some, you know, potions in retail. When out of nowhere, he gets beamed in the back. All right, now he's at 60 health and he's in a frightening situation. Okay, so based on what you guys can see in his inventory, materials and, you know, so on and so forth, all right, how would you guys play this one out? Would you box up with metal and try to heal at this spot or would you head into the building first? So, Benji decides to go into the building. You know, it's still really early in the match, and this spot hasn't been looted yet. And these crappy early games, man, every bit of loot matters. But even, you know, if it's plundered already, the decision to head inside does two things for Benji. It makes his position less noticeable than if he were to box up, and it gives him natural cover to work with. So once inside, the RNG gods bless Benji with the green pump and a big pot out of the chest. Exactly what he needs. But noticing his opponent is trying to break through the roof, he immediately establishes peace control and he creates space with bills. Benji is a master, guys, at creating space this way. And in this case, he places enough pieces in between him and his opponent that it buys him enough time to get that big pot off. And now, all right, at full shields, the tables are turned. Benji's the one playing aggressively now with confidence and his opponent is on the run. But seeing that they went through this door and to the right, what would you do here? Follow up so you can prevent them from escaping or play it slow and look for a better angle of approach. Well, good thing Benji didn't run through the door because this guy was holding the right side peak waiting for him. Try not to carelessly run through doors unless turning left. At least that way, you'll have a right hand peak. So because of that, Benji backs up and holds his own right side angle. His opponent, however, gets very antsy. They run back at Benji, but by that time, he takes the wall, edits the left window, and he pops this dude in the head. Game over. I'm not exactly sure why Benji made this left hand window edit, it could have been that he was just looking for a quick shot, or maybe he thought the unexpectedness would catch his opponent off guard. Either way, it worked, and Benji recovers from a lousy start to win retail row. Man, tossing out the disrespect too. I mean, this guy definitely got clowned on, but still, what a fantastic recovery by Benji. Gotta give it to him. So we're gonna recap this at the end of the video. In the meantime, let's look at Aiden, and in particular, some reasons why you should be very careful during the mid game. You ready? Here we go. Okay, so in this match here, I mean like right here, our boy Aiden spent his early game getting into brawls. And with a lot of great unexpected plays, he's leaving Pleasant with a couple of kills in his pocket. Cool. So going into zone three, his loadout is looking pretty stacked with nearly full mats, an RPG. Oh, gotta love that. A launch pad, goodness, and six minis. Yeah, he's ready to go. The only thing he's really lacking is some rifle ammo. But the storm begins to close, and Aiden's not in the safe zone anymore. To save on his own mats, he's going to work his way in using these enemy builds as cover. At that point, he does hear an opponent directly ahead of him, so he crouches to reduce his profile. A quick glance behind, and Aiden also spots an enemy to the north. All right, guys, so here is the big question. Do you leave this player alone and focus on rotating, or do you let some shots off and just see where it takes you?
Well, considering how many players are nearby, you definitely don't want to shoot. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to do that, buddy. That's going to give away your position, especially to that guy you heard rotating earlier. All the eyes are going to point at you. If Storm Surge was an issue for Aiden, he might have gone for some shots here. But since he has two kills already, I mean, he's just chilling. Anyway, Aiden heads into the zone, and even though there are like five players really close by in every single direction, he safely makes it in and boxes up. Soon after, he hears a player ramp up really, really close, so he edits and just tries to trap him with the cone. Good idea. Got heavy snipes. I don't know if you see it or not, but Aiden actually managed to trap this guy underneath his cone. If he could take the floor, he could drop him down. So, if you were Aiden, knowing everything you know about your loadout, position, and the number of nearby players, would you initiate the action by breaking the floor or ignore this player and just focus on surviving? So, most of the time, the right move here is just to ignore him. But Aiden has some other ideas. He's hungry for a frag. So he drops them down and secures the LM, only by a narrow margin though. So now you may be wondering, like, how is that the wrong move? I mean, he's just got the kill, right? Well, remember guys, all the players nearby, they just saw what happened. So now they know Aiden's weak. After the kill, he tries to expand out and create space, but there are just too many attackers. The whole lobby joins in. And even though he got the kill, the overall outcome wasn't good. So, you know, a lot of us will look at that and think, well, there's nothing he could have done. But Aiden saw all those players were next to him, right? With how stacked of a lobby it was, the risk was just way, 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 way too high. Yeah, I like the word way. Sure, you know, he needed a mats refresh and, and medium ammo, but <laughs> that was not how to go about it. Aiden didn't know his opponent's health. He took a 50-50 fight, which he barely won, and it was in the middle of several players. So the only way we could see Aiden living here, and I mean like right here, was if he immediately expanded out with metal. Okay guys, always, always use hard mats when expanding next to others. Cause wood is not like only like way easier to break, but it's also seen by others as a sign that you're running out of mats, buddy. Obviously no disrespect to Aiden here. He actually did really well this FNCS, but we just thought this clip was a perfect example of why you typically want to exercise caution during the mid game. Okay guys, now let's get into an in-game clip by the man who last weekend proved he's the king of consistency, Jordan from the X2 Twins. They should write a documentary on how consistent I am. Okay, so let's start off with a quick clip first. Jordan's loadout here is looking pretty spicy except for the fact that he doesn't have a launch pad. However, there's a supply drop falling nearby. In fact, he's the closest one to it. Okay, so in this scenario, with an opponent in front of you spraying their minigun, what would you do? Go for the supply drop or play it safe instead and just tunnel to the next zone. Well, there's some risk involved pushing for this drop because of that play with the minigun. They totally could decide to focus you, but in this case, the reward is just too precious. Remember, supply drops guarantee a launch pad since they're the only trap item in the game right now. Pads are crucial for surviving in-game zones. Jordan gets this one, and while he doesn't need it immediately, he saves it for when he does. All right, let's move into the next clip. We got Jordan and another in-game with the zone at max distance and the storm about to move. With his loadout being a little scuffed, this is definitely a launch pad play. Here we go. Okay, so the path you take after padding can play a massive role in whether you get lasered out of the air or, or not. So in this case, which direction do you think Jordan should go? Straight down to the center or to the right past the bills and close to the storm? Well, going directly down the center is a death sentence since you're putting yourself in clear view of the guys to your left and the guys to your right. It's a wrap. <laughs> so if you can, it's generally better guys to, to just hug to a side in order to reduce the number of players that can shoot at you. It may seem minor, but it can be the difference between surviving and yelling about all the controller players. Anyways, Jordan lands on the roof and since he's got a bit of time, you know, he could just look back for picks. But eventually he's got to move. You don't want to be too slow on your rotates. And when he does rotate, he utilizes these efficient tunnels all the time. 
Especially this two-piece diagonal tunnel. Yes, it's riskier than building a full tunnel, I get it. Still, it does use significantly fewer mats, which can allow you guys to focus on getting in without having to go for reckless impact frags. And any opportunity Jordan has to use his opponent's builds, he's gonna take it. So he can serve his materials so well, which is part of the reason why we think he was so consistent last weekend. Consistent. But now that he's running out of mats, he needs an impact frag. How do you guys think he should find one? Use the heavy sniper to break into someone's box or slide into the storm and see if you can sneak a kill on someone. So going into the storm would be way too risky considering Jordan has no floppers. But this is a 100% the reason you carry a heavy sniper in the end game. Jordan's going to pick a boxed up target, pull the sniper out at the last second and force his way right in. The surprise factor almost always gives you the upper hand guys. And in this case, it works. But unfortunately, the two players here barely had mats. So while he does gain a few more points off of that play, he ultimately runs dry and just dies after whiffing a pump shot. Obviously, that end game could have been better, but he still has a ton of points. And nearly all of Jordan's games were at that level of consistency. He just didn't, you know, get a single victory royale, but managed to win the whole FNCS, mainly due to these consistent end game strategies. Who wins FNCS solos for OCE? Please tell me this is updated. Is it updated? I don't want to show unless it's not updated. Yeah! Is it updated? Yeah! It's updated! Woo! Good. All right, it's time to do the recap. Here we go. During the early game, natural protection plays a critical role in surviving when you don't have a lot of mats. As we saw with Benji, don't hesitate guys to reposition during a fight and create space with what mats you have. We also saw Benji avoid pushing a door because he didn't have the right hand peek. He played it slow. He, he worked on his peace control first and, and he picked up the kill with no problem. As for Aiden, he got a little too aggressive during his mid game. Although he was smart and didn't let off shots on that rotating player, he got greedy, forced a bad fight, and he suffered an untimely death. So if you don't play in super stack lobbies, you should have an easy time going for supply drops when they're nearby. Always get them if you can because launch pads are vital for the end game zones. And when you do pad, avoid going directly down the center to minimize the number of angles your opponents have on you. And lastly, guys, Jordan did so consistently across his games by being incredibly efficient with his mats. He used enemy builds when he could and utilized efficient tunneling methods every single match. That made it so he didn't have to go for risky impact frags as often. But when he needed to, he put that heavy sniper to work. All right, guys, once again, this is your motivation guy. That's right, your friend, the one and only Keith Allen. I'm rooting for you guys to be successful. I really am, not only in this game, but also in life. I am in your corner. If you feel like you don't have a lot of friends or a lot of support, you have one guy that is supporting you, and that is your motivation guy. I'll see you guys soon. Hey, stay positive no matter what. That's it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this analysis, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe with the notification bell on. And remember to leave a comment telling us how many questions you got right and what you guys thought about them all right we'll see you soon peace out